Factors affecting climate. So when we talk about the factors that are affecting climate, there are five of them. The first one is the Earth's position in relation to the sun. The second one is our good friend latitude. The third one is elevation. The fourth one are the fourth factor are the wind and ocean currents. And the last factor affecting climate is are the land farms. And let's go to the first one, uh, to latitudes. Now we this is latitude, same thing for th that we studied before, which are the lines of latitude that start from the equator up from the north of the equator and south of the equator. It's a way of measuring distance. Um, this is what we want to focus on a couple of them, though, the low, mid, and high latitude. So let's get into it. The low latitudes are the area in between the Tropic of Cancer and the uh, Tropic of Capricorn. So this is in that middle part of the Earth that includes the equator. Uh, because it is closest to the equator, and the, equa and the equator is the part of the Earth that is closest to the sun, this is the hottest part or the warmest part of the Earth, one of some of the warmest parts of the Earth. And this zone is called the tropics. So this graphic now, good, this is up. This is actually the low latitudes. And as you can see, the area encompasses the equator and easily just for us to kind of take a look at. Uh, these are generally what you think about the more warm, most warmest parts of the earth. You see um, South America, the jungles in South and Central America, the jungles in the desert in Africa and Sub-Sahara Africa. You see the jungles in Southeast Asia and the deserts in Australia. All of this, all of these areas are part of the low latitudes. Now, the next latitudes that we'll take a look at are the mid latitudes. They're actually in the area of the they're north of the low latitude. So what they fall in between are the area of the Earth between the Tropic of Cancer and the Arctic Circle in the northern hemisphere and the Tropic of Cap Capricorn and the Antarctic Circle in the southern hemisphere. And what the climate here, um, what the climate is like in the mid latitudes, as you guys can probably guess, it's a lot cooler than it is in the low latitudes because this part of the earth is actually further away from the sun if you think and it makes sense if you think of the earth as a globe um that 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 the fat part of the of the globe or an egg is the part it would represent the equator that is the part that is closest to the sun all right so taking a look here where my where my um cursor is or where it should show up like a yellow dot on you guys this will represent the mid latitudes okay so the, these would be the mid latitudes and the next latitudes will be the high latitude so if you can kind of follow along with us the high latitudes are one up from the mid latitudes and they're the closest to their problem they, they um, encompass the earth that is the furthest away from the sun so the high latitudes they include earth's polar areas and the climate is extremely cold. It's extremely cold because this is the part of the Earth. The high latitudes encompass the part of the Earth that is that are farther away from the sun. That brings us to the next factor affecting the Earth's climate, which is elevation. And the real simple thing that you want to think about for elevation is that um, the higher you go, or as your elevation increases, then your temperature decreases. You guys can think about this if any of you have ever been to visited a mountain region or anything like that, you'll know that as you go higher and higher into the mountains, it becomes colder and colder. Even if at the base of the mountains or at the bottom of the mountains, it's wintertime. I mean, it's summertime. When you get, if you go high up or higher mountains, it, it can actually become winter. So that's just with elevation. And just think about elevation as um, your elevation increases, then so does uh, the temperature decreases okay and it works like this for all of the latitudes it does not matter where you are no matter what your elevation is as your elevation increases uh, your temperature decreases the next factor affecting climate that we'll take a look at are the wind currents so we'll spend a little bit of time on the wind currents I'll talk to you first about uh, prevailing winds so when we talk about the prevailing winds these are actually um, the prevailing winds and the def what you want to remember about them is that it's a wind they blow in a um, in a one pattern or one way. And when we say prevailing, I guess that helps you to think about something that prevails or majority. So prevailing winds are winds in a region that blow in a fairly constant or directional pattern. Um, now, 
the direction that the wind's blowing, that is determined by the latitude and it also is determined also by the Earth's movement because we have to think about the fact that the Earth is constantly spinning. You and I do not feel it, but the Earth is constantly feeling. Um, when we think about it, I want you to look at this graph and it will actually show you, or this graphic and it will show you, prevailing winds move clockwise in the north. And if you follow along with my cursor, you'll see in the, in the north, the prevailing winds move clockwise and counterclockwise in the south. Okay, or in the southern hemisphere. So because the prevailing winds, they move clockwise in the northern hemisphere and they move in the opposite or counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. And that is because the way that the Earth rotates, um, the Earth rotates from the east to the west. We'll get into this a little bit later in more detail a little bit later. Then uh, that brings us to a talk about the different types of wind currents. Now, the trade winds, the trade winds are the winds that are in the tropic these trade winds are actually they take place mostly in the low latitudes all right so they're trade winds they're in the low latitudes and they blow from the northeast towards the equator and from the southeast towards the equator so the trade winds go this way and they are in the low latitudes and that the low latitudes is the area that's closest to the equator once again Now the westerlies. The westerlies are the next type of winds that we will um, study. And now the westerlies are the prevailing winds in the mid latitude. So they're right here. So the westerlies are the prevailing winds in the mid -lat latitudes, and they blow from uh, they blow diagonally from east to west. Okay. So once again, the westerlies they are in the mid latitudes which is the step up or which is the region right above the low latitudes. The climate here is generally cooler than it is in the low latitudes, and they go from east to west. Now, the polar easterlies, these are the prevailing winds um, in the high latitudes, and they d blow diagonally from east to west. And if you kind of think about it, all these words, they kind of mean the same. Well, not mean the same, but you can kind of figure it out say for the polar easterlies if you think about the polar easterlies you think about polar you think about polar bears it's cold the ice caps that tells you that these winds blow here in the in the um in the north pole in the south pole you think about the westerlies those are the ones that you have to kind of commit to memory that they're the ones that are in the mid latitudes and then let's go back real quick and then if you think about the trade winds if you commit the trade winds to memory then it'll be easy to figure out the westerlies and the polar. All right. And the doldrums. That brings us to the next type of winds that we'll, we'll discuss. The doldrums are actually not even wind. It's a windless area. So it's near the equator. It's a pretty windless area. Um, which one? Go back one on the doldrums. It's right around here. It is a windless area near the equator. Early settlers or early... Um, early explorers they knew they were in the doldrums because whenever they they were they they relied on the wind in order to sail so whenever they would hit the doldrums they would know because the wind would disappear and they would be stuck or they would have to roll their ways way out of it so early explorers generally tried to avoid the doldrums because it is this windless area near the equator because they depended on wind in order to to steer this to power their ships now the horse lat latitudes the harsh latitudes are similar to the doldrums, okay? These are generally windless areas uh, just north of the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. So if we think about the doldrums as being the windless area near the equators, the harsh latitudes are the windless areas right here, and they're in the mid-latitudes. They're, they're, they're like on the border of the... Um, of the low latitudes in the mid latitude latitude so kind of put commit this to memory the horse latitudes are here there's no wind here and that is the windless area on the border of the mid latitudes and the low latitudes and the doldrums are the windless areas on the equator and this is just another graph to kind of show you guys the polar easterlies the westerlies the trade winds the westerlies and the polar westerlies this is just another thing just to Help you commit it to memory. Now we're discussing ocean currents. Getting to ocean currents. Um, ocean currents are just basically what you would think about, I guess. It's kind of obvious. Ocean currents are, they're just water 
cold water or warm water or seawater. And it's seawater that the ocean waves. When you think about the ocean waves, that, that's what you think about with the ocean currents, okay? Um, they generally, when you think about ocean waves, you guys may not know this, but they generally flow in a circular pattern. So it kind of us, it looks like they're going back and forth. But when you, uh, on television, when you see the ocean and all stuff, it looks like they're going back and forth. But the ocean waves generally flow in a circular pattern. Now, the Caloris effect, this is what is called when the, um, the ocean currents, the, the Caloris effect is effect, it affects the ocean currents and it causes them to move counterclockwise in southern hemisphere and clockwise in the northern hemisphere. So once again, uh, the Caloris effect is this is what causes the ocean currents to move counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere and clockwise in the northern hemisphere. So commit that to memory about the Caloris effect. Landforms are the next factor that we're studying that affects the ocean, that affects, um, affects climate. And it really is, if you take a look at this, this picture, you'll see just kind of that the surface features of the earth. We talk about things like the bodies of water and the mountains. They can definitely be affected by climate, right? So depending on where you live uh, near the water, whether or not the, the wind blows in, that can affect it. If you're high up, we discussed earlier that if you're high up, your climate will be affected. It'll be colder for you. So the higher you are um, on land, if you live in a mountain, it, you would generally be cooler higher up in the mountain than you will be if you live lower in the mountains. Now, the climatic regions. Climatic regions are this. Um, what geographers have done or different people who study the earth, uh, the earth has been divided into five different climatic regions. And here they are. And within each region, there there's two or three or four different subregions. So the tropical region, the dry region, the temperate region, which is where we fall into, uh, the cold region, if you see northern Europe and northern Canada and actually some of the United States, and the polar region, which shows you um, the North Pole. Now, each of the subregions, they all have their own type of characteristics and soil and vegetation. And so each so vegetation is specific to each type of region. And that makes sense because certain vegetables need to be in certain types of, of temperatures and need certain t um, conditions in order to thrive. All right. The end.